So I will here present results um, of a collaborative study with um, Salal Humea, my colleague, and David Bloom, my former department chair. The background to our study is um, that we found when in 2011 the UN General Assembly high-level meeting on HIV AIDS um, were um, confronted with the HPTN 052 um, trial results Many people called it a game changer in the fight against AIDS. We found here six sources that all use independently the word game changer in a Lancet editorial, um, Sidibe, The Economist. Um, so we wanted to explore what is a game changer in the fight against HIV and what is it in particular applying the rational framework of cost effectiveness analysis to this type of question. Um, certainly, there remain questions about the effectiveness of ART in reducing HIV transmission in general populations, particular in the hyperendemic settings in Sub-Saharan Africa, where we of course worry about most um, that new HIV infections remain high and we need to most urgently intervene to bring these infection rates down. Um, UNAIDS has forcefully argued that treatment as prevention should be fully embraced and that it will shape the future of the HIV epidemic. But it is unclear as budgets are flatlining or decreasing, um, how tasks could be financed. It is also unclear how tasks should be implemented if we want to do it. Policymakers should, could certainly choose to implement other interventions first or bring other implementations to large scale before starting TASP. So we investigate the cost effectiveness of different combinations of tasks with other interventions of proven biological efficacy medical male circumcision, of course, and antiretroviral treatment under current guidelines. And we do so in a modeling approach um, that um, innovates on um, existing models. Most current models of the HIV epidemic have the, the limitation that they need to be calibrated against um, um, using curve-fitting exercises against past trends of the disease and then project from these past trends into the future. Of course, when we are investigating a completely new intervention, these historical trends may not hold true and we might actually get it wrong by um, fitting or predicting the future from the past. And in addition, the calibration parameters in the um, um, industry standard models on the HIV epidemics are a black box and they are numerically de derived rather than analytically from our understanding of the mechanisms of the HIV epidemic um, including the biological transmission and behaviors. So we um, derive here an analytical model from simple first principles and assumptions of the biological and behavioral mechanisms giving rise to HIV. We have um, a model where we flow in adult um, HIV positive and HIV negative populations who then acquire um, through sexual activity HIV when they partner with opposite sex partners in heterosexual activity. They um, work their way through different disease stages and can at different disease stages, depending on our assumptions, um, receive ART. They can also, of course, as HIV negatives, receive circumcision in the circumcision scenarios. The population is further subdivided into men and women. Um, the pools um, that we have in the model are um, distinguished by time since HIV infection and of course receiving and not receiving ART. The sexual behavior model generates incidence and um, we do this by drawing from a probability distribution of the number of partners in each period, each year, and then um, people engage with those um, partners over the year in sex acts. Um, we assume that the sex acts with HIV in infected partners can possibly result in HIV acquisition, and uh, the acquisition is independent of the um, prior sex acts um, with other partners or the same partner. And under this assumption, we um, analytically de derive um, our model. The scenarios that we explore here um, vary by um, circumcision coverage, ART coverage under current guidelines, under um, CD4 count, um, under 350 eligibility, um, and treatment as prevention as a third intervention. And we permutate all these different coverage levels um, in our study. 
We assume, and that reflects sort of our understanding of how TASP could work, that ART and TASP are necessarily coupled. When we do interventions to get more people to home-based testing, um, as Connie gave an example, or other mechanisms into HIV testing and onto ART, that necessarily under imperfect coverage of ART under current guidelines, we will also gain people who currently should be on ART but are not receiving yet ART. And we um, capture that understanding of TASP in um, a simple form here where essentially the X is the increase in TASP coverage, B is baseline ART coverage. So we choose ART coverage um, with a same percentage point increase as under TASP unless that number exceeds 80%. 80% is, of course, the UNAIDS aspiration of universal coverage. Um, we apply our um, model to South Africa for a number of reasons. South Africa, of course, has the largest absolute number of HIV-infected individuals in the world. It is also the worldwide largest number of people currently on ART and currently needing ART under South African guidelines. And it continues to have a high HIV incidence, possibly slightly declining in, in some settings, but still very high in many com communities. And the South African government has declared in its um, national strategic plan to um, scale up circumcision and has done, done so, I think, with an additional um, 150,000 individuals circumcised um, since the declaration a few years ago, which is, of course, given the population size in South Africa, um, a slight increase. Um, lastly, so there is potential here in South Africa to also work on circumcision, not only ART and potentially TASP, but also to increase circumcision coverage, which is 45% um, um, according to one estimate. And South Africa has, of course, of course good data. We have um, to parameterize the model chosen data sources that you're probably familiar with to some extent. Um, I will not walk through all of them. Um, they are from South Africa, national level estimates if possible, and otherwise um, estimates from international sources or meta-analyses. A uh, first result is when we rank our different scenarios by cumulative costs. This is simply ranking them by cumulative costs. So we see here the more ambitious we become in our investment in HIV combination prevention, um, the more our HIV incidence declines, but the decline is much higher here when we invest relatively little. When we start investing at the same um, increase, we have a decreasing rate of decrease of HIV incidence, and this is um, mirrored, this picture, with the mortality rate picture where, um, again, ranking by exactly the same ranking of our sin scenarios by ambition in investment, by total cumulative costs. We see um, that we gain initially a lot regarding mortality and then continuing at, at about the same rate to increase our investment in HIV combination prevention, we gain less. For instance, if you divide this graph here in the middle, you can clearly see the steeper and then slower decrease in um, mortality rates. The HIV incidence across all our scenarios here is spent um, by the baseline scenario, um, which is here in these red dots, um, ART coverage at about 50%, no treatment as prevention, T0, and 45% assumed circumcision coverage gives us the slowest incidence decline, but nevertheless, even under this assumption, we would observe an incidence decline according to our findings, and the most ambitious scenario here would give us quite um, a uh, rapid decline in HIV incidence with 80% um, ART, TASP, and circumcision coverage. Um, and a similar picture for mortality, where we would, um, of course, achieve most when we invest most and least when we invest least. That's not completely true for the following reason. So the um, mortality lowest scenario is a, a circumcision rates of 45% rather than 80%, our maximum that we could have scaled circumcision up to. And the reason for that is that under lower circumcision rates, we of course have higher numbers of new infections in the long run, which then need to be covered because we're holding ART coverage and TASP coverage constant here at 80%. Um, the overall cost scenarios show that um, costs are declining under these constant coverage assumptions in all scenarios because we are 
um, succeeding in preventing new in infections, of course, and we see that it spans from a decline in the ambitious scenario, um, ART coverage 80, task coverage 80, circumcision 80, from about 2 billion per year to um, about 1.5 billion per year, and um, much lower costs, of course, in the current baseline case. When we now run um, the different results against baseline to come up with our incremental cost effectiveness ratios to really fairly compare these three interventions against each other, the baseline 45% circumcision, 50% uh, ART, 0% TASP, um, we run against the baseline circumcision and we see that we can avert an additional case of HIV acquisition with um, about $1,100 at 60% circumcision coverage with about the same amount at 80%. When we run ART, increased coverage against baseline, we see that a case of HIV infection averted will cost us between six and $7,000 at coverage levels, coverage levels um, increased to 60 and 80% respectively. When we run ART against the scaled up circumcision scenario, we see that ART becomes less cost effective. We now need to spend above $7,000 to avert a case of um, HIV acquisition and TASP, the least cost effective of our alternatives when we run that against previously scaled up, which is our incremental cost effectiveness ordering that gives us the result that we should do that. Um, when we run TASP against highly scaled up um, circumcision, highly scaled up ART, we gain an additional um, infection averted with about fifteen to $16,000. Um, the picture in terms of incremental cost effectiveness ratios looks very similar for US dollars per death averted. So in conclusion or as implications, we find that a combination of high ART coverage under current guidelines in South Africa and high circumcision coverage provides approximately the same substantial HIV incidence reduction as TASP, but it is much less expensive. Um, here um, an estimate that it is approximately $5 billion less expensive over the period um, 2009 to 2020, that in costs per HIV infections averted due to different types of um, combination prevention interventions, an increase in circumcision coverage is the cheapest initial alternative at about $1,000 per infections averted and outperforms increases in ART coverage at about $7,000 per infection averted. And it is interesting to see that the cost effectiveness of circumcision coverage increases over time, a result that I haven't shown. And unlike for ART and TASP, it actually becomes cost saving after 2040. So in sum, we find that according to this model and our results here, government officials in South Africa should consider first scaling up circumcision coverage to high levels, then ART, and then TASP. And TASP, of course, is still cost effective, um, as we've seen, but it is um, an option we should um, consider after succeeding with circumcision and ART coverage under current guidelines.